Schematica instance and what we do with our EDI solutions. So I, I don't know how familiar you are with SPS Commerce, but we already have this pre-built network to all these, you know, three or 4,000 different trading partner or buying organizations. So we have all the EDI connectivity, you know, with like Walmart requires AS2, Amazon, I think also does AS2, some do van. We, we accommodate for all the connectivity requirements. They all have their different EDI specs. We all have, we have those all built and reused by all of our customers that connected this to our network. And then for, um, for this case, um, we're able to connect our network directly with Acumatica. And how we do that is um, install a solution right within Acumatica. Um, and you would see it when we install it. It's, it's on the left here called SBS Commerce EDI. And this just, it basically, it enhances the functionality within Acumatica to automate EDI documents like orders coming in, invoices going out, PO acknowledgements going out, ASNs going out, um, and some other things that we have on the product roadmap as well. Um, and how it works is SPS Commerce, when we receive an EDI 850, or if you're in grocery, an EDI 875 purchase order, we take that, we post it to your SPS account, which there's another web-based version if you want, I can show. But what you would typically work out of is just right within Acumatica. You can configure it different ways. But what you one option would be if you go to receive inbound purchase orders, um, the orders will come in. They'll run through some validation uh, logic. Uh, so we'll do things like uh, analyze the content of the PO to make sure that Acumatica recognizes the item numbers on it or like the ship to locations, um, that sort of thing, or even like pricing. And you can configure it a little bit differently. So in this case, there's three orders that came in. The top one came in with the status of okay, meant it passed all of the validation, it recognized everything, the item number, ship to location, pricing looked correct, et cetera. Um, warning is an example where, like if I wanted to click onto this, um, in this particular case, there's, there was a warning that the, the customer configured to say if it's you know greater than 5% or 10% variance of what I set up my price for this item to be in Acumatica, then I want, I want a warning signal to be, um, uh, to be shown to me, so you can you can you can still set it up even if it comes in as a warning set status to be automatically imported. Um, some of our customers choose not to do it that way and actually take a look at it before they they import it. Um, or if, you, if I want to go back to uh, the previous screen, an example of like if we run an order through validation and it fails, um, like if it doesn't recognize an item number, um, then it'll show a failure and it won't import it into Acumatica. And you can go into this error message and it'll give you a notification saying what, what the problem is. So in this case, there was multiple things wrong with it. Um, didn't recognize the inventory ID, which is another, the Acumatica term for the item number um, that, that Acumatica recognizes. Um, there was also a problem with the order quantity unit of measure. So maybe maybe the trading partner ordered in cases, but in Acumatica, you have the item set up as each is. Um, so we do give you the ability to do cross-referencing when needed, um, both for those both of those scenarios, like item numbers um, or uh, unit of measures uh, conversions. Um, but either way, um, once you resolve those errors, if there are any, um, you can either set this up to automatically import orders into Acumatica without any clicks, or if you wanted to have more of a manual process for like maybe just the warnings, um, you do have the ability to select select individual orders and then pull the data in to, for import into Acumatica. Um, but let's say there is a, like I, I showed you that error, that error order, and it, it, there was a, a problem with an item cross-reference so I just clicked on cross-referencing for items, and this is where you actually have the ability by trading partner to set up cross-references. So for example, if Walmart sends an EDI purchase order with only their buyer part number, um, you have the ability to correlate that to whatever item number you set up in Acumatica. So if it's a vendor ID or vendor, vendor part number or UPC number, you know, whatever it is, that's how you can correlate um, your, tra your trading partner's item numbers, whatever they use on their EDI orders. Um, once you actually import an order, it's kind of, you just walk through the SPS, or I'm sorry, the, the Acumatica native solution. So I went into sales orders, I'm going to click into sales orders, and then we do add this EDI SOS tab um, at the top, which basically it's like an easy way for you to just toggle to that and see your actual EDI orders. So you can separate out the orders that you receive via your SPS commerce account from your various EDI trading partners. Um, just a quick way to just, um, you know, sort or filter through to those. And you can see here's the order that the, um, that we imported. It's got all of the summary information like the PO number, PO date, uh, shipping windows. It's got the item level information or the detail level information at the bottom. So, you know, the um, product descriptions, uh, unit of measures, pricing, quantities, 
you know, that they ordered, et cetera. And there are different tabs that we add. So if you ever like um, an example, like the, for Nordstrom, if you ever start getting like the big department stores where they'll send you an order, I think Walmart actually does this for some of their vendors. Well, well, they will put on the order different store numbers. Um, SD, we call them SDQ locations, sales quantity destination locations. There are we do have the ability to populate individual store locations, even though you might be shipping to a distribution center. Um, otherwise, there's a, a, these other tabs that um, we give you access to. This SPS EDI details tab basically gives you the ability to correlate, like I mentioned earlier, different um, part number types that your customers might order by that, you know, you might have different uh, part numbers set up within Acumatica. So you can see that information here. I believe, um, I believe Wal or Amazon requires the EDI 855 purchase order acknowledgements. So if you have to send that document type for any of your trading partners, you can automate that right from within Acumatica as well. And um, that includes the ability to do it at the item level. So there's this uh, line act status one field that we add to your account. Um, that you can choose from a drop down, and this drop down will actually change from trust customer to customer with the different options that are available based off of whatever their EDI 855 acknowledgement specification includes in it. And you know, so in this case, um, th this particular trading partner has a whole bunch of different options that you can choose from, whether you're just accepting it uh, as is, or if you have to reject a line item or something's back ordered. You know, you choose whatever you're going to be doing with this order, and then to, to send that acknowledgement out, there's this button at the top that you click and then that'll be S that'll send the information to SPS Commerce right out of Acumatica. We take that, convert it into the EDI uh, 855 specification that your trading partner requires and send it off to them via whatever their, their uh, preferred communication protocol is. Um, so if I wanted to go back into orders, I kind of just walk you through the, you know, the PO acknowledgement. So from there, so the, the typical workflow that we see is the PO comes in, for trading partners that require that acknowledgement, I showed you how to do that. And then typically the next step would be the shipping notice. So within Acumatica, a lot of a lot of Acumatica users will just, they'll have logic set up within the system itself to create shipments um, automatically. Um, but if you wanted to create them manually, you could do that by clicking on create shipment with that in Acumatica. And we do give you, again, there's this SPS EDI tab um, that if you had to add in like a, a, in this case, a bill of lading number, or like Dillard's, I believe, requires a uh, a load ID that you have to uh, create via their TMS system. Well, you know, if there's just user-defined fields or custom fields that you have to add into Acumatica that are required in the advanced ship notice that you have to send to your trading partner, this is a, a, a tab that you have the ability to either manually uh, populate information or if you do have some sort of like WMS component that works in conjunction with Acumatica, um, you may be able to just automate the population from that WMS system into these fields, like, like a bill of lading number, so you don't even have to you know, copy paste something in here. So whether like you build your own packages or you have a handheld um, that you're able to use to, to auto, you know, populate the packaging, or, or maybe you just set up automatic packing rules, packing logic that does the, the creation of the packages, either way, um, what you would do next is, in terms of actually sending the EDI advance ship notice to your, your trading partners, again, you go back to SPS Commerce EDI, there's this outbound ASN section. And if I wanted to process those EDI shipments, I, I click on that and I'm gonna pull up from this drop down under the actions, I'm gonna prepare packaging and it's gonna pull up the shipments that I've created. You can see there's check marks this under this prepare package preparation box that's saying I've already done it for some shipments, but for this particular shipment that I just created, I haven't done this step yet, so it's blank. So I'm gonna select that one. I'm gonna prepare the packaging. Um, if you, it, you know, th th if you have logic set up, it'll build the package. Otherwise, if you um, need, to, if, you know, if you've already prepared the packaging um, before this, um, you can just overwrite it. Click on this box to overwrite it, so we don't, you know, we don't change anything you've already done. Um, but either way, you would prepare the packaging at the first step. And then, if you do have any trading partners like Walmart, if you're shipping to their distribution centers, they're going to require the GS1128 labels. If you're uh, familiar with those. Um, we do have a label library uh, in the background here at SPS Commerce that Acumatica will send the shipment data to, and we will use that data to populate the correctly formatted label according to Walmart or you know Amazon, you know whatever trading partners that you're, you're you're creating the labels for. We'll take the shipment data and format it according to their label template, and then you would so you what you would do is choose print labels. Um, similar check mark box. You can see I haven't printed labels for this shipment yet, so that, that's a good indicator to know if you've done something or not. So I'm going to select that shipment, 
I'm going to print the labels. And then once I, once I click on process, that actually sends a ZPL file to your Zipa printer um, to print out those GS1 128 labels for your warehouse, warehouse folks who are attached to the cartons or the, uh, the pallets. Um, those labels, again, that's more of like the ship to DC, ship uh, to store order models that they don't, they're not required for, um, you know, if you're drop shipping directly to an end consumer. Um, but from there, the, in terms of actually sending the EDI 856 out, the next step would be uh, marking the shipment as ready to send. So again, I have, you can see, I haven't done that yet for this shipment. I can select it. I'm going to process this as ready to send and you can select the configuration of the solution at this point, um, where at, once you do this step that I just showed you to click on um, ready to send, at that point, we can export it from Acumatica as an EDI 856 to your partner. Or if you don't, even though you might want to mark it as ready to send yet, but not necessarily send the ASN to your partner yet, um, you do have the ability to delay that or schedule it. Um, in which case, if I wanted to go back to the SBS Commerce EDI tab, there's also this send outbound ASN section where you can schedule ASNs to be sent like at a certain time of the day. So for example, if you wanted to create those ASNs and mark them as ready to send, but FedEx trucks don't come to your location to actually pick up the shipments until 5 p.m. every day, um, then you can schedule the ASNs to be exported at 5 p.m. And so this is where this is the screen where you could uh, go to do that. Or you could just you know manually select certain shipments and, and send them you know, yourself if you wanted to do it that way. Most of our customers would do this on a scheduled basis. Um, the invoices are typically the last step of the transactional process. And, um, you know, it's I think this was kind of already talked about, but within Acumatica, it does have the ability to automatically create the invoices off of shipments. And so most of our customers, they'll configure our EDI solution to do the same thing so that once the shipments are sent, the EDI invoices are automatically exported as well. So there's not, not really anything much to show there other than if I wanted to, uh, under the outbound invoice section, view all invoices, you, you know, you do have the ability obviously to see um, the invoices that SPS Commerce um, is exporting and what the status is uh, from, this, uh, from this screen here. Um, if there is like a, 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 a issue with an ASN you sent, there is visibility right from within Acumatica. So if I wanted to um, view errors, there's a, a view ASN errors uh, screen here. And it is, this has a list of um, problems that, that resulted in some, some sort of data issue with, with ASNs that you tried to send. And again, there's an error message here. You would probably download the, these to an Excel, so it's a little bit easier to read. But again, it, it has error messages that describe what the problem is and how to fix those. Um, so you can, again, hopefully have the, the visibility into this sort of data so you can, you know, if you forgot to add a bill of lading number and Walmart requires that, then you would just, you know, add that in and then reprocess the ASN. Um, so you have the, the ability or the visibility to do things like that. And again, there's a reprocess ASN section here as well. So you can see the aired ASN, select them and reprocess them. Um, other than that, you do have the ability to uh, see all of your data in another spot, not necessarily within Acumatica, but we do have something called fulfillment monitor where, you know, if you just had a business user that wanted to look up, do a general search of um, your documents that you've either sent or received from your SPS account, whether that's via our web-based service that you would also have access to or, or the data coming in and out of Acumatica, um, you do have the ability at your fingertips for anyone in the, in the, the company to, to look up your EDI data. So as an example, there's various search parameters under document type. I, I just did an example. I'm gonna, I put in shipments. So I want to see all the ASNs, generally speaking, that I've sent over a particular time period. This is another, or, or if you just wanted to look up a specific one, you could put in a shipment ID or a PO number. Um, you, you can see here some search results. So it's got the, the trading partner name that I sent ASNs to, timestamps, um, the acknowledgement status. So if they've actually acknowledged something that I've sent or not how we sent it to them, like the connectivity, whether it's AS2 or FTP or a value added network. You'd have the ability to click into it. And if you wanted, you know, someone from the business office to make sense of what you actually sent, there's a nicely templated uh, temple, template format of the advanced ship notice instead of raw EDI data, which can be hard to read for, for you know, um, maybe people in the accounting office, but this is easy to read. That said, you do have the ability to look at the actual files that we receive, the data that we receive from Acumatica, and the EDI data that we turn that into. So, you know, if Walmart ever calls you and says, I never got a, an 856, an advanced ship notice from you, or there's an issue with the EDI data itself and, and they want you to pull up the actual data, you have the ability to do that. 
um, as well as view the actual EDI 997 functional acknowledgements that we receive back from them, which is kind of like a read receipt. We will post those files here. So, you know, a good example where you might use that is if a, a trading partner says they never received an ASN and they say they're going to charge you a penalty for that, this is a good place to see, to con first of all, confirm if you did send the ASN and if you got an acknowledgement back from them. And if you did, you can download the file from here and email it back saying, yeah, you, you can't charge me because you did receive it because you acknowledged it. Um, so you have that sort of visibility at your fingertips. And then you also have the ability under this reports tab to set up um, daily automated reports. So these are optional. You can subscribe to them with group email addresses or individual addresses. Popular ones that people have subscribed to are that daily unacknowledged report. So again, if you sent 100 ASNs yesterday, 99 got acknowledged, but one of them didn't, then you would get an email every, um, you know, the next day saying, here's that one that you didn't get an, an, an acknowledgement for. So you might want to ask your trading partner about that one. Same with daily error reports. So if you sent, again, 100, 100 documents outbound yesterday and two of them had some sort of error um, that SPS Commerce uh, processed, then you would have a daily error report to easily see those on an exception basis. And then there's just some general uh, transaction volume reports as well.